Mr. Harris here and welcome to a new video of chapter 4.3. In this video, we're going to talk about what are identical and non-identical twins. So first off, we need to know that a mother, she is able to give birth to two babies or sometimes even more in some cases. And when two babies are given birth from the same pregnancy, the same pregnancy, we call them twins. Okay, so most of us should know about this definition. So what are the differences between the two types of twins, identical and non-identical? So let's have a look how they are actually given birth. What's the process? What does it look like? So first off, let's talk about identical twins. So one ovum is released and it is fertilized by sperm. And afterwards, one zygote is formed the zygote will divide into two cells okay this is the important part over here the zygote over here will eventually divide into two cells and each of these cells they will grow and develop into an embryo and afterwards of course we've already learned the process of how an embryo will eventually grow up to become a baby so the, each of these embryos, they would grow up and become a baby. So for an identical twin over here, the most important or the factor that is differentiating between a non-identical twin in this case is the zygote that is formed over here, it would divide into two. And hence why you get identical twins. So identical twins, they develop from the same zygote, as I mentioned earlier, hence why they have the same DNA. And as you can see over here in the picture, they also look very alike. They're genetically identical. So they are the same sex, meaning they are the same gender and they look alike. However, variations still occur due to the differences in their environment. Of course, we've learned in the previous video uh, the factors affecting variations, it is heredity and the environment. So in the case of identical twins, the environment could um, lead to a factor of having variations in them. For example, their life experiences. Now for non-identical twins, a bit different in this case. Now have a look over here. You could already point out the difference. For non-identical twins, two ova are released and fertilized by two different sperms. So unlike identical twins over here, there was only one ovum with one sperm over here. But for non-identical twins in this case, two ovas are released, two ova are released and fertilized by two different sperms. And afterwards, each of them would grow to form a zygote, okay? And the zygote will um, grow and develop individually to form an embryo. So it will develop an, into an embryo eventually, and the embryo would eventually become a baby. Okay, so for this case, not identical twins, it does not divide into two. So it does not divide into two rather in the beginning there are already two ova to begin with okay in the beginning there there are already two okay so please make sure that you can differentiate this between between identical and non-identical twins so for non-identical twins, they develop from two different zygotes, hence why they do not actually have the same DNA. Also, they're genetically different. Okay, as you can see in the picture over here, their gender may not be the same, may not be the same, and they may not look alike as well. So, however, in some cases they may be of the same gender, they may be of the same sex. However, they may not look alike. Or on the other hand, they may look alike, but they may not be of the same gender. Okay? So, let's wrap up this part. What 
what type of twins they developed from the same zygote and they're genetically identical. Of course, it's pretty obvious. Use the same word, identical twins. Variations between identical twins still exist due to the differences in their environment. So for example, their life, uh, life experience, and what type of twins they develop from two different zygotes and they are genetically different. What are they called? Yes, these are non-identical twins. All right. So that's, this wraps up uh, part 4.3c, identical and non-identical twins. However, I would like to do some checkpoint questions to wrap up this whole topic, topic 4.3. So let's first talk about this question, question 1a on checkpoint. In the double helix structure of DNA, A pairs with C and T pairs with G, is that correct? Um, you guys, if you guys remember, I've taught you a way to easily recognize this. It is at Gold Coast, right? So what it essentially means is that A will pair up with T and G will pair up with C. So it's AT together and GC together. So in this case, the question says A pairs with C and T pairs with G. Of course, this is false. All right, let's have a look at the next one. The instructions for a cell to make proteins are based on the sequence of bases on the DNA. Okay. Again, this is just a definition question. So proteins, the instructions are given to a cell to make proteins. It is based on the sequence of bases. Yes, this is true. As you remember, remember we used to decode, for example, we have A, T, C, and G, C, A, something like that. And then we could um, form some codes, you remember? And then we did some questions. Let me show you. Let's go back should be somewhere here over here like this so you can decode the bases over here that you see and then you can form for example a word in this case okay so the answer to that question question 1b is true let's see question 1c variations in our weight are determined by both heredity and the environment. Is that true? Yes, of course it's true. As I mentioned earlier, variations, it can be determined by both heredity and the environment. And finally, which of the following traits is not a continuous variation in humans? So continuous variation, if you remember, it, I gave you an example is that you can, for example, have a wide range of values. So wide range of values. And on the other hand, discontinuous, discontinuous variation is when you have either one. So either you have it or you don't have it. So over here, which one, for question two, which one is that you either have it on one hand or you don't have it on the other hand? So let's see, question option A, circumference of the head. So circumference because it's a, a wide range of value. So some may have a smaller head, some may have a bigger one. So this is not correct. IQ, IQ level. Some may be, some may have a lower IQ level. Some may have a higher one. So again, this is not true. Let's look at option D first. Hand span, as we know, the hand span could vary in length. It can be shorter or it can be longer for some. So this is not true. And obviously over here. The only remaining option is option C. So you're either right-handed or you're left-handed. So only two options. So that is the definition of discontinuous variation. And that is the answer for question two. All right. So guys, so this wraps up chapter four. So in the next videos, we'll be starting a new chapter, chapter five. I'll see you guys in the next ones. Bye.